Ali Drew for seconds out here with Joe Gallagher. Joe, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, are they? In the bubble now, um, Callum Johnson making his long-awaited return to the ring on Saturday. How good is it now to just be in fight week and be here? No, really good. Um, I think uh, if you would have been in the gym on Monday or the back end of last week, um, I was having plenty of giddy moments and it was just good to see CJ performing really well. Also, he's had a training camp with Natasha and Marcus. I know three of them had a really good camp and uh, you have them giddy moments where you know that they've done everything and you're confident in the work that you've done and uh, you're just looking forward to fight week now. And obviously he's been out of the ring you know, a long time. Have you seen him in training sort of with you know, a bit more motivation, a bit more determination to get back in because it's been so long? You know, has the break almost done him good in the gym? Um, I wouldn't say it's done him good, um, but I do feel there's a, a sense of uh, maturity. Um, also a sense of knowing now his career, it's like it's now or never. And um, his attention to detail, his drive, his focus, his determination. Um, like you say, he's been coming up to Manchester, um, staying with me and um, just being absolutely on it 100%. He knows he's not coming back in a six round or an eight rounder. He's coming back straight away, making championship weight fighting a kid that's ranked in the top 15 in the governing bodies, only two losses, pulled puncher, and that's it. He's gone straight in at the deep end and gets this win and uh, performs well. We'll be looking for a world title. So I just think there's a more sense of purpose and business-like from him for, for this fight. What kind of fight are you expecting on Saturday night? You know, How are you expecting it to go? Explosive, both big punches. Um, as I just said to you, his opponent there, uh, 24 wins out of the 32 by knockout. And I know people say, well, he ain't beat this one and this one. But if you're knocking people out, you can beat journeymen on points or beat kids on points. But if you're knocking people out, you're knocking people out, you can punch. And in the fights that we've stood and watched him, he can punch. He's heavy handed, good hooker. Um, and uh, same with CJ. He's got so much frustration and it's just like winding up a little kid's toy and just letting it go a go in the ring on the Saturday night. He'll be wanting out there. He's just got to calm that enthusiasm. We don't get caught with anything silly. I do find it going to, it's going to be a, an explosive fight. And providing he gets through this weekend, are you hoping to get him back out soon? You know, because he's had that break now. I presume you want to keep him active. Yeah, obviously when we, we signed with Frank, um, that was the plan um, to get him out uh, very quickly. A couple of fights straight after each other. Obviously Joe Smith won uh, the other week. There's been plenty of talk in the past of uh, Callum Johnson and Joe Smith. They should have fought a year, two years ago in the summertime and it didn't happen. So... That'd be a good fight, and uh, I think he's one of the most wanted men in boxing, Joe Smith, at the moment. Everyone wants to fight him, don't they? So, uh, um, listen, Frank Warren's the man that can deliver world titles for Callum Johnson, and Callum Johnson's uh, the, the, the best equipped man to go and get that world title for him. And I do want to talk to you about Alex Steele Magani, who you're now training as well. Um, just talk to me about the fact that he's you know, training under you, he's got his fight on the 22nd of May. So just talk to me, talk to me about the fact. Yeah, that uh, no, Alex Delmar. I just had correct you. He's uh, training with Anthony Crawler. Crawler's his trainer, but he trains within our gymnasium. So uh, no, he's doing well. Uh, Anthony's doing a good job. It's his for Anthony. It's his uh, first serious fighter that he's training. So there's huge pressure for Anthony as well. Um, no, but that's a relationship. It's good watching. Um, work together and gel together. Um, obviously, Anthony had been taking him sparring Carl Frampton. Uh, uh, Alex was over there in Dubai sparring uh, Carl and, uh, and he's back in the gym and he's training now. So uh, it's good watching uh, Anthony uh, grow because it's very hard for him when they retire to then change going to coaching. And same with Scott Quigg as well. Scott Quigg in the gymnasium. He's got one or two fighters of his own there in their training. And uh, it was funny the other week, um, Anthony's girl and Scott's girl sparred each other. And I said to her on the gym, yeah, sit back and watch this because the two of them were going to head to head for the first time. So it was just good seeing the emotions of the pair of them with, with, with the students. And uh, it, it was just a good sign. I, I just think Manchester Boxing uh, in years to come has got to be blessed with the amount of uh, good coaches that's got to come through. Do they come to you quite a lot for advice and, and for help? Do you sort of oversee what they're doing and, and help? No, they, listen, they're coming to the gym environment, that's what it is in the gym environment, Scott comes in with his girl um, and his other fighter and they come in and they train and it's just the fighters being in the gym environment, um, Scott's girl Tanya, Annie Crawler's Jake and Rihanna, they're in the gymnasium there alongside Paul Butler and Natasha Jonas, do you know what I mean, and uh, Callum Johnson, so they're seeing how proper fighters who have fought of elite level, Tasha and Olympian, Cam Johnson World Title, how they perform, Paul Butler and what's asked for them and what the standards are and Anthony Crawl and Scott Quigg were very 
very uh, demonic trainers as such and they're setting the stall out this is how you have to be or it's a waste of time so I think it's more than that obviously when the girls are sparring or they'll do something I might throw an odd comment in or, or whatever just a bit of advice but I'd say a bit of a I won't say safety net but a bit like a safety net but it's good for them it gives them confidence as well because they're not fighters now confidence that they're a coach and what they're saying is right or wrong so the fact I've not really had to say much to either or of them speaks volumes on how well they're doing yeah, and are you proud that you, you know it? Yeah, they're, yeah, hundred percent. They're you know they're doing it. They what they what they're doing. They've learned from you. No, uh, well, I, I won't take all the glory of it. Scott Quigg came through um, a, a good system with Brian News and Collier's and Pat Barrett there. Then he came with his fire, Anthony Crawler with Jim Lewis at Fox. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good that they're in the sport. A lot of fighters get lost to it. I think uh, Paul Butler will make a very good coach. He's doing some coaching and pads that he is now. Natasha Jonas, I think, will be a, a fantastic coach. So um, it, it, you can just see it in some of them. You can just see the teacher in people sometimes and in in them when they're sparring. Jose Burton, believe it or not, will be a fantastic coach if you can just get the discipline to be be a good coach. But he 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 could be a really good coach. And I think that's something he's going to do with amateur kids. Um, but Jose and Paul Butler, you can see them at the edge of the ring wanting to give advice and say things. And um, yeah, I always say to them, well, practice what you preach, get back on the back, so to some of them sometimes. But no, it's, uh, no, it's great to see a gym like that, whether pushing and giving advice and giving their opinion. And I do want to speak to you about um, match room splitting with Sky Sports, going to the zone. What's your thoughts on all of that and how it's sort of going to go now? Because it's, it, there's you know, some areas where what's going to happen, you know, with AJ and Fury. But what do you make of it all? Only what, what we all read on social media. It's like everything this day in social media. But look, listen, um, it looks like Eddie Hearn now has done this nine-figure deal now with um, the zone. And um, whatever's left with Sky, then it seems to be it's AJ and Dylan White. They still have contracts with Sky. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Whether um, Eddie Hearn sells shows from the zone to Sky in the same way Sky can go and buy a show from America Transform. Maybe he may do that. Sell his zone shows to Sky on delayed, or you could show them the next day or whatever the big shows. Maybe something like that. Or will Sky now reach out and go back to how it was before Eddie Hearn and Matchroom became the monopoly in Sky? They'll go back and give promoters like in the past. We had Hennessy, we had Hatton, we had Maloney, uh, Frank Warren. Um, we wonder if they'll reach out to, to promoters like a Steve Goodwin, like a Steve Wood, myself, or whoever up and down the country. Callis Alderland, now he's made a deal with Wasserman's, and I think that's a safe bet there. I think something there with Wasserman Boxing, Sutherland Boxing, and, and Sky. I don't think there'll be as many shows as there once was on Sky. Um, but I think the thing with Sky that made it really good was for the casual fans, was Sky Sports News. Sky Sports News, and I always used to say in my fighters, you can be in a David Lloyd and a cup of coffee in a bar in Portugal or in a Bifa, and Sky Sports News would come up and you'd be there. And the fighters know themselves, be oh, just seeing you, I'm in a bar in, you popped up. So that was a massive, massive tool for boxing and matchroom boxing. And I think by not having that and going to a nap is hard, but I think that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big thing. It'd be interesting to see now how that the numbers will be on an app being driven towards an app where Sky Sports News, which everyone goes to, was a big driving force to bring the casual fans in for the pay-per-view events. But I should say they've still got Anthony Joshua and a, a Dylan White in the pay-per-view model there. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But... Yeah, no, I'm just saying, it's changing time, it always changes. And um, like I say, it's, uh, you've got Triller involved now, paying big money as well, so it's... Uh, we're just so interested to see um, who the commentary team is at Sky now or who it will be at the zone. And uh, I think Snoop Dogg and Oscar De La Hoya have uh, brightened things up with Triller, haven't they? <laughs> I know. There was some some commentary, I think, on the, the show the other day that was, I don't think he's actually watched boxing before, one of the commentators. And he was saying, oh, he was saying he just didn't know who anyone was and he'd never watched boxing and he was actually commentating. It's It's new. <laughs> No, it's new, it's funny as well, it's, it, it's mad really when we're, we're boxing Saturday night and how many times have we heard it where Adam Smith or whoever Andy Clark has said, apologise to viewers at home for the talk in the corner and it's like half ten at night, you've got two grown men knocking holes out of each other and you're apologising for a swear word in the corner yet the other night on, on Triller, Snoop Dogg was cursing left, right and centre and uh, Oscar De La Hoya... Uh, going through the gears, so yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it is crazy. Well, good luck for Saturday night. Cheers, thank you. The return to the ring, enjoy it.